Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. This is a Cranoception. A ground effect based aircraft carrier carrying not one, but two air. Wait, it's even better, spacecraft on top of its fuselage. This Soviet Ekranoplan is not just an aircraft carrier, but it's also a launch platform made to carry the mothership and small orbital ship overseas to a launch location and send them to the stars. We've done some pretty crazy stuff here on the channel, but I promise you, this is beyond anything you have ever seen. Today, we'll be talking all about the Sea Launch Ekranoplan. By now, everybody knows what an Ekranoplan is, but if you don't, flashback time. The brilliant solution to sea transport is based off something called the ground effect. This made extreme speeds over the sea possible and transporting huge amounts of cargo over long distances in a quick matter, a routine job. Goodbye boats. Both the Soviets and the Americans experimented with the idea of an aircraft that utilized the ground effect, but the Soviets made much more advancements in this field, and they were the first to create the insane KM Ukranoplan, also known as the Caspian Sea Monster, which was under the veil of secrecy long before being discovered by Americans during the Cold War. Flashing forward, what followed was the Lunar Kranoplan, which was fitted with anti-ship missiles and had the role of a ship hunter aircraft, undetectable to radar, and which could perform hit and run attacks. But the death of the Defense Minister Ustinov in 1984, all the funding was cut to the Ekranoplan programs, and the one operational Lund class Ekranoplan and three A90 small vessels were the only ones left in service for the next decade. But that didn't stop the mad lads at the USSR from coming up with some truly insane ideas for Ekranoplans. And it's this huge one that we're talking about here today, designed to beat America at the space race. An Ekranoplan is such a creative solution to transport over water, you have to wonder why it never really took off in a big way compared to other vehicles. Perhaps it's because the Soviets and the Americans never got the word out by using a Squarespace website. But hold on, don't skip this part as I'll have some sneak peeks for future videos. You see, Squarespace starts with the best-in-class website template where you can customize every design detail with reimagined drag-and-drop technology, and then you can also use use it for both desktop and mobile. You don't have to make two separate sites. This of course is all thanks to the Fluid Engine built in and ready to go on any new Squarespace site. But that's not all, you can also use the campaign marketing tools to start driving business instantly and every Squarespace website can have a built in shop to start selling right away. Seriously, I actually use Squarespace for my own online store, www.foundandexplained.shop where you can get all sorts of great merch. So thanks Squarespace. So get back out onto the water, support this channel and see more videos just like this, but also get 10% off your first site and domain at www.squarespace.com found. Back to the show. Americans with their famous space shuttle and Soviets with their Buran hoped on a new trend that promised the glorious future between the stars. You see, firing rockets is insanely expensive and having a multiple use vehicle was the solution. Both sides had an aircraft that could carry their new spacecraft, like the Boeing 747 Space Shuttle Combo, or the main reason why the AN-225 was ever built. It was made to carry the Soviet Buran. But the idea of an air-launched space vehicle was also being explored, with the Soviets and their MiG-105. Yes, that's the space MiG that's coming up on the channel very soon. You see, what made the Ekranoplan an interesting launch vehicle idea was the fact that the best place on Earth to launch something into space is, well, the equator. It's well known that up to two times more fuel is needed to launch a rocket from the northern or southern hemisphere, and the Cosmodromes for both the US and the Soviet Union were built in the south of their respective countries so they could be as close as possible to the equator. 
But scrapping all this, what if you could simply launch from the equator itself, without having to invade any country from international waters? Project Sea Launch was made exactly with this in mind, with assembling rockets in the middle of the ocean not being an easy task, but assembling an orbital vehicle would be an impossible one. But that's where our friend the Akranoplan comes in. Our Akranoplan carrier would be powered by six engines total, out of which four would be used to take off and reach the ground effect height, and the remaining two for the flight itself. The total weight of the Akranoplan and the spacecraft on board was around 750 tons, which compared to the 550 ton Caspian Sea Monster wasn't that far fetched. The aircraft would have a double fuselage connected with a flat surface where the spacecraft would be mounted and a double tail to give it room to the spacecraft just like the AN-225. Sitting on top of the carrier fuselage, the spacecraft was actually in two parts. The first part was the mothership, and then a small orbital craft would sit inside of it until it launched. The mothership was powered by a further six ramjet engines, and the orbital aircraft had two rocket engines, and the overall design was based on the delta wing meets flying wing concept. But as you may or may not know, ramjet engines have one issue. They can't start off on the ground. They need to have a running start, or more precisely, they need to have air rushing into the engine so it can get compressed and then combusted before shooting out. A Kranoplan's top speed was projected to be around 550 km per hour, which again was quite realistic compared to the 500 km per hour for the Caspian Sea Monster, and it would give the ramjets more than enough of that initial speed needed to operate. When the engines were started, the spacecraft would detach and use the ground effect to gain more speed before turning upwards and gaining altitude. Once it reached a high enough altitude, the orbital craft engines would start and they would take it into Earth's orbit. The orbital craft itself would weigh around 100 tons, which is comparable to the Buran's 92 tons or the Space Shuttle Orbiter's 100 tons. So we could expect a similar layout with a payload bay in the center fuselage and probably similar capacity. So this thing was absolutely huge. Just how big you might ask? Well, this whole thing would have certainly been massive. If we look at the Caspian Sea Monster, that was 92 meters long and 37.6 meters wide and had a height of 22 meters. So this Akranoplan would have been at least 25% more larger than this aircraft to support the weight of the mothership and its orbital craft, along with massive wings, unlike the somewhat smaller wings on the Caspian Sea Monster. Anyway, back to the story. The mothership could return back after launch with one option being landing at a nearby airfield, but also landing on the Akranoplan itself, which would have been possible looking at the tests and calculations made with the models, although it would have been extremely hard. Now, the first issue with this idea is the fact that the original CAM Akranoplan operated only in relatively calm weather within the closed sea, like the Caspian one. With an ocean, you can never expect the same calm seas and it would be very difficult to fly and operate the carrier itself. The engines are also placed in a way that there is any issue with them, the spacecraft would be in harm's way and destroyed or damaged immediately. And then we need to talk about the launch itself. If the spacecraft leaves the ground effect height before achieving the required speed, it would crash immediately, and flying on top of the Akranoplan and matching speeds when landing would be very difficult. Unlike the KM and the Loon class, this design didn't have any additional side plates on the wings to reduce wingtip vortices, which would induce more drag. The project also requires the engines to produce thrust of 30 to 35,000 kilograms force. If you compare these to the most powerful Soviet engines of the era, the Kuznetsov NK-32s, which power the Tu-160, they were still some 5,000 kilogram forces short. So completely new engines would have also needed to be developed, and we all know how Soviet projects that didn't have an engine ended up going. Along with the development of the Akrata plans, a couple more interesting options for its future usage popped up. The United States wanted to build a civilian passenger Akrata plan, and the Soviets developed the insane VVA-14 submarine hunter, and they even thought to create an Akrata plan aircraft carrier to patrol their sea borders. 
But all of these ideas, including the sea carrier, sound totally insane. How on earth was the ground effect supposed to carry the sheer weight? Well, you see, the ground effect allowed Wings craft to experience significantly reduced air drag when flying low over the surface of the water. And ground effect is not just reserved for Akranoplans, all aircraft experience this. And that's why you can sometimes see aircraft flying low before pitching the nose up when they gain speed. In our case, this would allow the KM to fly once achieving the ground effect height with only using two of its engines. This is impressive because it was a 540 ton beast, not much less than the largest aircraft in the world, the AN-225. And although slower than the Antonov, it allowed for much more room to upscale the thing compared to a standard aircraft. And it's the upscaling that's the critical term here. That's how ideas of the Akranoplan aircraft carrier came to be. With enough engines and thrust, you could have an entire aircraft launch platform on the sea. But this would never come to be. The Akranoplans died out of the 90s and the KM crashed all the way back in 1980s. And this massive beast would have been insanely hard to operate and the issue of weather and operation in the middle of the ocean persisted. But as we said, it wasn't just the only crazy Akranoplan plan project that the Soviet Union came up with, nor the Americans. So be sure to check out our videos on the American Akranoplans, plans and do let me know if you'd like to see Bartini's ground effect aircraft carrier. Hope you enjoyed this one and I'll meet you next week with a new found and explained adventure.